How's it going everybody and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video we are gonna keep talking about the lighting but this is gonna be the final lighting video. From this one I'm, I'm just gonna move on to something else from the short film. If there was another scene that you wanted to see just let me know and I'll, I'll do my best to make a video on that as well. But uh, I'm, I'm just gonna show you the one that I think it's um, the very interesting one which is the one inside the cave because that one took um, some very particular situation. So starting with this one, when he is coming down, we see that he is being lit by some cool god rays here. So let's look for our directional light so you guys can see. And that's not how you type directional. Now, most of the things that you see here are, you know, regular default. The light is just not that intense because I have the exposure cranked to uh, a fairly high level. But as you can see, I didn't change much from the regular settings. Everything is mostly as default, except for volume scattering, because if volume scattering is just one, you see a lot less of the God rays. So I just cranked them up by increasing this a little bit. The other thing that I do have to create those God rays is exponential high fog. The easiest way to create something like this is to have a directional light, to have something that occludes that directional light. You can do this with volumetric clouds. I'm doing this with assets and I uh, also go into the exponential high fog, which if you go down here, you can see that I have volumetric font turned on because if you don't, then um, this happens and it's not that good looking. You have to actually look at the rays for them to show up. Whereas if you click on volumetric fog, then you have some nice God rays. So just remember that this is the setting. If you want to have some cool God rays in your shot, everything else is the same. I'm just going to go into my camera and then he just boom arrives. Everything else here is pretty much the same. I do have, like I said several times, you usually don't like your characters with the environment light because that's the way you would do it in a video game. And that's the difference between um, the in-game cinematics and an actual cinematic that is crafted for the game is the fact that you have very specific lighting. So I also have a point light here. Again, you know, I use point lights for ambient light that is sort of illuminating him on the side when he lands. So he doesn't look that dark because if I, you can see if I turn it off, then it's no longer lighting his back. Now, the other thing I do have here is skylight and I have a skylight at a specific range. And again, it's up to you. I don't have it real time capture because there isn't any uh, real time motion of the environment or anything like that. So that wasn't necessary. Now, after that, then uh, he just walks around um, this one. You can see that nothing happens to him because this one is the part where the drone comes down. Uh, this is just a drone being animated coming down. That's, there's nothing to it. So this part as well, it's another reason why I have that light in there, because if we go back into our light and again, I have it in a very specific spot just because of the effect that I wanted to create, because if I turn it off, then you can see that it is a bit too dark on his side. Although there, there is a reflection that probably shouldn't be there. But again, the point is so I can light him in a somewhat dark setting because he is in a deep cave after all. And again, I, I do have my camera in a very specific uh, way to create this effect. We're going to talk about that in the coming video. But this is mostly just, just like a shot crafting situation, not so much lighting. So if we move on, I do have some lighting that's coming in from the cave to indicate that something's going on there and the stream pool's going uh, over. I don't mind this. One of the things that somebody asked me about this message, you can have this message all the time in here. And when you render this message, it's not going to show up. So don't worry about that message. If you're going over budget, that means it's trying to um, kind of load all the textures, but it's not loading them at the same time. So some things may look a little bit aliased. If you see that message, uh, there's a way to take out that message. But if you don't have a high end equipment, don't mind this message. You don't have to increase the streaming pool. Just don't mind that message. 
um, just leave it as as it is and render and when you render just crank everything up when he goes into the cave there's another part here where I just have this point light and again this is part of the illumination that shouldn't be um, because it's a cave there's pretty much no illumination coming in here the reason why I have this here is because you know it'd be, it'd be weird if we couldn't see anything I would have to figure out some sort of other type of lighting which probably I could have if I added kind of like a spotlight onto the character, but uh, that wasn't the intention. So there's a camera cut in here, and he is going to enter the cave. So if I, uh, let's just get rid of the icons. So he goes into it, and you can see that now he sees that there's something going on here. That's why he's going towards, and let's switch to my other, this was a master sequence, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have several sequences here. Let's go into the other one, which is the portal one. And in this one, I didn't do a master sequence because uh, I just kept adding the cameras in the place where I needed. By the time I finished, I was like, oh, I have this is pretty much a master sequence. So uh, again, sometimes I'm, I'm in the zone and I don't mind. Now, this is supposed to be a dark part, but just like I explained on the first video, I illuminated this well so you can see everything and then I color graded uh, the whole shot later in DaVinci Resolve so it can look like an inside of a cave with just some LEDs lighting things up and also this was supposed to be kind of like something subtle in the background which again it, it only works with that color grading right now everything is well illuminated and if I go here this is the part where I was going to add some visual effects here. I didn't do that in the end because I wanted to add them in post. That ended up looking not really good. So what it is, I just left it as it is and just added some sound. This sound in the cave, actually, it, it worked quite well. So this is the part where uh, merits some explaining and it's the VFX. I do have a tutorial on how do I got this uh, VFX inside here. Now, I know it, it looks... Um, overexposed it's actually um, super super bright but there's a reason for that uh, because other than that I, I wouldn't be able to get him to be lit up by the particle effects we're gonna go into that one of the things that I did here is I, I cranked some things up and I didn't mind that this was blown uh, all the way like super exposed because in the end you can always go into your post-processing software you can use DaVinci that it's completely free and that way it it does help a lot with um, the color grading and post-processing it's just easier doing it over there it's too it's too harsh and limiting to do it here inside of real engine plus one of the things that I did is I exported as linear which we're going to talk about that later but anyways let's go into how this thing was lit now again I'm activating this um, VFX I mean put a little bit more speed on my camera and let me activate the icon so you can see what's going on so it's fairly simple it's actually simpler than I thought it would be so I do have a light here this is the light that was initially lighting this place because otherwise if I turn off this light then you can see this part and I wanted the sort of like the portal to be shown I wanted detail of the portal to be shown so that's the reason for this point light right here and I have this rect light that I'm actually controlling with sequencer. So right now this rect light is actually not working up until here. And you can see that it lights up. And what's lighting up the environment around here, it's not so much the particle effect, but this light. Because if I turn off this light, you can see the difference. Uh, there is a reflection over here from the particle effect. So the particle effects this is a uh, stock. I, I bought that particle effects and I just throw it in as it is. So the particle effects, this one comes with emissive, which again, Lumen is helping a lot with the emissive, but emissives can only go so far. Uh, always light your scenes with actual light. So if I turn on my rec lights, you can see that it's actually lighting the environment according to what's going on on screen. So again, that's very important for you to do whenever you have uh, some visual effects that produce any lighting. So maybe if you have like a dust or something, you don't need that. But if you have something like this one, which is an energy portal, 
or an explosion or something, you may need to add some lights in there and animate them in sequencer like I'm doing here. So again, this one, the way that I animate it, it's a little bit different because as you can see, there's a circle here. A circle here means that in the curve, this is not linear. And the reason why it's not linear is because it's a portal and I didn't want the, the light to instantly turn on. I wanted to gradually turn on, uh, not turn on, but the intensity to gradually increase. So if I go into the graphic, you can see that it's not a linear graphic, but it's more like, you know, there's a little bit of a curve here and then it turns into linear just so it can help me with that ramping up of the light intensity uh, that goes according to the particle effect as opposed to just turn on full blown completely because that would have not been correct to what we're showing over here. And as you can see, even like this light is so bright, it's, it's going over all the other lights. I do have some lights here that I place because these thing has some LEDs. Uh, this, this is from a very particular pack that I kid bash. Um, same with this whole cave. We're going to talk about that in another video. But yeah, that is how I lit this whole thing. And uh, everything else is a camera shot. Uh, let's go to the drone portion because the drone portion is another portion that I really like. So now we see that, you know, the drone is kind of like analyzing and illuminating. I kind of like what is going on here. So. If we go and click on drone, you can see that he has some, you know, little motion there. And there's a light that I tried to pair up with these lights over here. So it's just, it looks like he's kind of scanning everything. Now, if you go here into my drone on sequencer, you can see that there is a spotlight in there. If you look at the outliner, there is a, a spotlight that it's attached to the drone. The reason why I did that is because that way uh, this follows the drone. And it, one of the things that's very important is you can see here in the sequencer that there is no transformations for my spotlight. That is because the spotlights actually attach to the mesh and you don't have to animate the spotlight unless you wanted to animate the intensity, but you really don't have to animate the spotlight in any way if you just wanted to follow a mesh. So in this case, it's following this mesh right here. You just add it to sequencer just to make sure that it was there. That's what I wanted to show you today. Just a little bit of the lighting inside the cave. And in the next video, make sure you tune in because we're going to start talking about cameras. Cameras is something that I get asked a lot. And the camera is 100% what's going to give you your shot aside of lighting. So I shouldn't have said 100% lighting. It's really important and it's the base of your shot. But if you don't position your camera in, in a very specific way, if you don't have this, that specific focal length to create that depth of field, you're not going to create that cinematic effect. It's going to look like a video game. So we're going to talk about that in the coming video. So make sure you subscribe, bring that bell, like all that good stuff. Um, there's a patron if you want to help out. My patrons are all here on screen. Thanks a lot to my patrons. Uh, there's the Discord, Twitter if you want to follow me in there, and the Instagram as well. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.